Hey viewers, there's probably another game you're interested in seeing today, but I don't have it yet. My new CPU only came with the standard edition of Starfield, so don't expect any videos on it until after September 6th. The next few days will be a long wait, but at least I've got Fallout 4. <laughs> and with this new computer, I've wondered if today it's finally possible to get the high refresh rate experience we were denied back in 2015 due to terrible optimization and the infamous 60 FPS cap. You know I like to give away the conclusion at the beginning, and the conclusion is yes, absolutely, it is possible right now to get a locked 120 or 144 or even 165 FPS with the right hardware, the right settings, and of course, the right mods. Future hardware might be able to push us past 240 FPS, and if we're lucky, in the future AMD's fluid motion frames technology will help double whatever frame rate our computers can get assuming it's everything it's cracked up to be. Consider this guide a one-stop shop for getting the highest frame rate you can possibly get in Fallout 4, regardless of your setup. Even on a potato, this video will still help you pump up the frame rate, and maybe reach that once unobtainable magic 60 FPS number. The first and most important mod to download is High FPS Physics Fix. You can't have a high refresh rate experience if you're locked to 60 FPS, and even if you are fine with a 60 FPS limit, you'll still want this mod because it fixes multi-monitor and variable refresh rate setups, and it decreases loading times. Using it in combination with the author's new mod, Long Loading Times Fix, my loading times when starting a new game have decreased from 15 seconds to 5 seconds, and loading save games is now practically instant. And that's without messing with the settings. You can disable loading screen animations to speed it up even more. For the load time reduction alone, these mods are essential. But the ability to run the game at over 60 FPS is even more incredible. It's well known that bypassing Fallout 4's frame rate cap causes the entire game to speed up more and more the higher your frame rate is. But High FPS Physics Fix eliminates that problem entirely. If there are any lingering issues resulting from the removal of the frame rate cap, I haven't seen them. The worst I've encountered is the lockpicking minigame still being stuck at 60 FPS. Other than that, even with frame rates in excess of 400, everything just works. Make sure you're running the game with the script extender and address libraries installed, or else the mod won't work. If you're only going to download one mod for Fallout 4, make it this one. It is absolutely essential. With the frame rate unlocked, I ran many benchmarks of Fallout 4 using a variety of settings and resolutions, and I looked at other people's benchmarks as well. And here are some fast facts. Unlike Bethesda's earlier games, which no longer stress the graphics cards of today and are primarily CPU-bound, Fallout 4 at ultra settings can still give today's GPUs a bloody nose, especially at 1440p and 4K. If you only use high FPS physics fix and nothing else, for a consistent 144 FPS ultra settings native 4K experience, you'll need the RTX 4080 or 4090 from the benchmarks I've seen. My poor RTX 4060 can only get around 80 to 130 FPS at 1440p ultra, depending on the situation, which isn't bad, but it's not good enough to max out a high refresh rate monitor. But worse than the unjustifiably high GPU usage is the even more insane CPU usage, which is far higher than any of Bethesda's previous games. And while GPU usage remains relatively consistent throughout the game, CPU bottlenecks are heavily concentrated to built-up areas with a lot of NPCs. It all comes down to too many draw calls and too much AI to process. That's why the Corvega Factory, Quincy Ruins, and the area just outside Good Neighbor run like complete ass, while areas like the Glowing Sea tend to run fine, even with all the fancy weather effects. So performance is terrible, we all know that, but what can be done about it? The first thing to look at is tweaking the graphics settings the game comes with. In 2023, you shouldn't rely on the vanilla launcher to control settings, instead use Bethany to tweak them. But I'll use the vanilla launcher as a springboard to talk about how settings affect performance. Like most games, with a few exceptions, Fallout 4's graphics settings only affect GPU usage, so if you're heavily CPU bottlenecked, don't expect to see much improvement from most of these settings. Resolution should be set to the native resolution of your monitor, unless you are on a very low-end GPU and really need the extra FPS. 
Resolution, like in any game, has a massive impact on your GPU limited frame rate, and this game is surprisingly demanding at 4K. Luckily there's an upscaling mod to help, which I'll talk about later. For anti-aliasing, TAA looks better than FXAA, although they both look like shit. Neither have a major performance impact. You can get better anti-aliasing using the upscaling mod I just mentioned. Anisotropic filtering should be maxed out, since it doesn't cost much and has a very positive image quality impact, especially when viewing textures at oblique angles. Texture quality will have no impact on frame rate unless you are running out of VRAM. For cards with over 6GB of VRAM, this won't be an issue, even at 4K. Lowering shadow quality makes shadows look jagged and blurry, but can give a substantial increase in GPU limited frame rate. I wouldn't recommend going below medium, but this could be a setting to drop if you need to pump up the frame rate some. Shadow distance is a much more useful setting because the further out shadows are, the more draw calls they seem to use. Like I've said before, draw calls are a huge drain on CPU performance, and reducing shadow distance is the easiest way to reduce the number of draw calls. However, for all users, I would actually recommend leaving shadow distance at ultra and using the shadow boost mod to dynamically control shadow distance depending on frame rate. When your frame rate is high, the shadow boost mod will let you enjoy high distance shadows, and when the frame rate is suffering, it will pull shadows back. That's much better than using a static shadow distance. Decal quantity is very unlikely to be a limiting factor for your performance, so leave it at ultra. Lighting quality does pretty much nothing as far as I can tell. If you set it to Ultra, it's supposed to enable subsurface scattering on Fallout 4's ugly NPCs, but if you can see it, you've got better eyes than I do. I'd say this is a good setting to drop down to high or medium if you need to eke out a little more GPU limited performance. God rays are a massive FPS killer, both when the game came out and now. And the worst part is, if you turn them off in the launcher, they're still enabled, just set to low. The launcher is broken, and has been for at least 7 years. If you want to turn off God Rays completely, you'll need to do it in your Fallout 4 Any by typing in the command I've left in the description. Eliminating God Rays provides a massive boost to performance. Expect at least 10-15% to more FPS in scenarios where you are GPU limited. However, I quite like the look of God Rays, so rather than remove them outright, I leave them at Ultra and use the Shadow Boost configuration menu to reduce their quality. Depth of Field is another setting you're not allowed to turn off in the launcher, but at least this one only has a minor performance impact. However, due to the upscaling mod I'm recommending next, you'll probably want to turn Depth of Field off. Check the video description for information on how to do that. Ambient Occlusion should be set to HBAO on most modern systems. It will have a small GPU performance impact, perhaps slightly larger on the Intel and AMD cards it wasn't designed for. Sadly, this game doesn't support HDAO because it was sponsored by NVIDIA, and they made sure to screw over AMD at every opportunity. In the end, they screwed themselves over with this next setting. Weapon Debris should always be turned off. Yes, even on NVIDIA cards, because it causes constant crashes. It should just be removed from the game at this point. It's literally unusable with newer NVIDIA drivers and graphics cards. There is a mod that fixes the crashing but it also removes collision from the debris physics, making them as pointless as watching fart porn with the sound off. Do yourself a favor and keep this setting disabled. Screen space reflections are often used on water surfaces and in the Institute. These reflections are usually very faint and blurry, which makes it less distracting when they disappear due to the reflected object moving off screen. Personally, I like how they look. I keep them on, but disabling them will give you a moderate FPS boost in GPU limited scenarios. Wetness has little performance impact and makes everything appropriately shiny when it rains. It looks better on than off, so keep it on. Rain occlusion should also be kept on unless you want rain to disappear once you enter buildings. It doesn't have much impact on frame rate and should only be disabled on the most pathetic of potato PCs. Motion blur and lens flare both have very little performance impact, but again, because of the upscaling mod I'm recommending, I'd advise turning them both off. On the View Distance tab, we finally get some more settings that actually impact our poor overworked CPUs. Of the four fade sliders, Actor and Object Distances are the most important. Minimizing them can improve FPS greatly, but with disastrous consequences for playability. Ideally, these two should be maxed out, but never put them lower than halfway unless you absolutely need to. Grass and Item Fade are less important. You can cut back on them a little to eke out more performance if you need it. 
Honestly, on any system, I'd highly recommend ignoring all of these settings and using Shadow Boost to dynamically adjust them as the situation demands. That way you can have the benefits of the highest settings when your system can handle it, but also stable frame rates when your system falters. I'll talk more about Shadow Boost later. Right now, I'm going to cover a much less popular mod that is almost as much of a game changer. It's called Fallout 4 Upscaler, and it introduces that newfangled AI image reconstruction technology into Fallout 4. You'll need to download the Upscaler base plugin to use it, and also download some DLL files from external websites. Follow the directions on the Nexus page, and you should have no trouble. There's three different types of upscaling, DLSS2, FSR2, and XESS. On an NVIDIA RTX card, forget about the latter two. Use DLSS. For older NVIDIA GPUs and all AMD and Intel GPUs, FSR will be your best bet. XESS either crashes the game upon exiting crafting stations or causes some trippy screen effects, making it unusable. DLSS 3 frame generation is also available if you subscribe to the author's Patreon but I've only made $4 from this channel so far, so I didn't want to invest 5 on something that might not even work. Even without DLSS 3, DLSS quality will give you an excellent FPS boost, on par with the boost you'll get from turning off God Rays. Keep in mind though that upscaling only increases your GPU limited performance. If you are heavily CPU limited, you could drop down to FSR or DLSS Ultra Performance and it wouldn't help you out one bit. I know what you're wondering right now, will upscaling from a lower resolution make the resulting image look worse? Well, not necessarily. Comparing DLSS quality to native rendering with TAA, tree branches and other thin geometry are actually more detailed and clear in the upscaled image. There's less aliasing too. And this footage is taken at 1080p upscaled from an internal resolution of 720p. If you upscale from a higher resolution, it will look even better. Interestingly, FSR actually looks very close to DLSS with this implementation, so don't feel too left out if you're on an AMD or Intel GPU. The image quality is not much worse, and the performance improvement is just as good. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as a free lunch, and upscaling does have some downsides. For some people, these downsides will be a deal breaker. Upscaling with motion blur and depth of field enabled will give you a horribly smeared image. You'll need to turn off these effects. Lens flares must also be disabled or they'll be visible through walls. Furthermore, upscaling is incompatible with both ENBs and DXVK. Speaking of ENBs and DXVK, let's try out both of those and see how they affect performance. In earlier Bethesda games, it was possible to get better frame rates by using ENB with no preset loaded. But in Fallout 4, this seems to no longer be the case. So don't load ENB unless you intend to actually use it because it has no performance improvements. But what about DXVK? DXVK is a little DLL file that converts the game's rendering API from DirectX 11 to Vulkan. This conversion could be useful for newer integrated graphics cards or Intel Arc cards, which may have better Vulkan support than DX11. But on an NVIDIA GPU, personally I'm seeing about the same or a slightly lower frame rate when using DXVK, whether I'm CPU or GPU limited. Switching to Vulkan can cost me 1 to 5 frames, depending on the situation. I guess you just can't beat NVIDIA's DirectX 11 drivers, they're crazy good. DXVK might still be useful for AMD or Intel GPUs though, so I'd recommend giving it a try on those platforms. Next up we've got FAR, Far Away Area Reform. People have said this mod improves performance, but in my testing it didn't affect frame rate in any way, or even reduce VRAM usage. The effects of this mod are subtle. Distant landscapes are a bit darker and noisier and appear less desertified and more grassy with this mod on. The decision to use this mod or not should come down to your personal preference, there's no discernible performance impact. Sprint Stuttering Fix is our next mod, and it's absolutely worth using. The name is a bit confusing because this mod doesn't actually do anything to improve frame rates. The stuttering caused by sprinting too fast is a camera issue, not a frame rate issue. Basically, when you move faster than a certain speed, the game thinks you're in a vertibird and tries to stabilize your camera accordingly. I wish I was joking. This bug is so stupid that if we were talking about any game developer other than Bethesda, I wouldn't believe this level of incompetence is possible. Thank fuck we have modders to fix issues like this that have been neglected for 8 years. A mod that likely won't help you is Fallout Priority. 
I saw absolutely no performance difference with it enabled, and I made certain to test it 800 by 600 to ensure a CPU bottleneck. Maybe this mod helps on quad-core CPUs that are being slowed down by background tasks, but on my system there was no difference for better or for worse. I guess it doesn't hurt to keep this plugin loaded, but don't expect any performance improvements. Previsibean's Repair Pack, on the other hand, is a wonderful mod. It does its best to optimize the awful pre-combined and previsibility system Bethesda had to put in place to get this game working at all. Previsibeans across the entire game have been rebuilt, the end result being a sizable reduction in the number of draw calls your CPU has to worry about, resulting in a higher CPU limited frame rate. Areas like Boston Common in particular run significantly better now, with a 50% improvement for me when I lower the resolution to induce a CPU bottleneck. When GPU limited, you will see very little FPS gain from PRP. And the downside of this mod is potential incompatibilities with other mods that edit world spaces. But luckily there are patches for most popular mods to make them play nicely with PRP. I'll link some patch repositories in the description. It's a shame that using PRP means half your load order is going to consist of patches, but that's the way it is. If you already have an excellent CPU limited frame rate like I do, even without PRP, it might be smart to forego it and save yourself the headache of installing all these patches and making sure your load order is correct. But most players are going to need PRP to have any hope of reaching ultra high frame rates, unfortunately. Next we'll try the Vivid Fallout Textures mod, in particular the 1K version. These textures are much smaller than the vanilla games, and I wondered if that might result in some performance improvement. Unfortunately, no. Loading times are about the same, and I didn't notice better frame rates even when moving between cells rapidly to try to generate stutter. 1% and 0.1% lows remained unmoved. I did, however, notice about half a gigabyte lower VRAM usage with these new textures. On 4 gigabyte graphics cards or integrated cards, this mod or mods like it that reduce texture resolution could make a huge difference in reducing stutter. Buffout 4 is next and I would highly recommend it because it fixes some engine bugs and adds a crash logger. It doesn't improve performance very much though. One to three extra frames at most is all I got, and that might be within the margin of error. Still, you should always use this plugin. Insignificant Object Remover unfortunately doesn't remove Marcy and June Long from the game, but it does get rid of some small rocks and debris. This will net you about two to five extra FPS at most. It's not a big improvement, but if you're looking for a little boost to get you closer to your desired frame rate, sacrificing a few little rocks and twigs may be worth it. Shadow Boost is the final mod I'll cover, and possibly the second most important one after High FPS Physics Fix. This mod is the secret ingredient to getting both the highest frame rate and image quality possible at all times. After installing this mod, you can bring up a menu by hitting F12 that lets you select the target frame rate, as well as the minimum and maximum settings you're comfortable with. If you drop below the frame rate target, settings adjust downwards until they hit your minimums or the frame rate recovers, and if you're well above the target, settings get brought back up towards the maximum until your frame rate begins to drop again. It's a genius idea, and for the most part, it works flawlessly. The only thing I couldn't get to work is terrain LODs, those never seem to change on the fly, regardless of my settings. Perhaps they're broken in this version. At least the more important shadow distance and fade settings are working well. You can also adjust god rays quality through the shadow boost menu, but sadly these settings cannot be made to change dynamically, which is a missed opportunity considering their massive impact on frame rate. So while shadow boost does have issues, it's still an essential tool for helping boost frame rates. Everyone should be using it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I made it in a rush to get it out the door the same day Starfield Early Access releases, so I could do the stupid joke about how I don't have Starfield yet. So I may have missed some frame rate improving mods, but I think I covered the essentials. With help from these mods and tweaks, I can very often hit my monitor's 165Hz refresh rate, and even when there are drops, the game never goes below 80fps, so the VRR screen sorts it out nicely. Without a frame rate counter? I could easily believe it's a locked 165. It's basically perfect. It's too bad Starfield won't run this well. Uh, maybe in eight years it will. Anyways, leave a comment telling me how much your frame rate improved or didn't improve by following this video, and until next time, toodles. 200 subscribers? I can't believe it. 
Wait, what? It's 2000? Holy shit. 